Hey everyone, Robert McCall here with Physics of Flight. Today we're going to be talking about putting. It's extremely important to be a good putter in disc golf because it's going to lower your score, give you confidence on the course, and help a lot with your mental game. So we're going to talk about how you can choose a putter, how you can putt most effectively, and kind of how you can change your putt based on your circumstances. Let's get started. First things first, let's talk about choosing a putter. There are tons of different options to choose from, uh, and let's talk about the reasons that you would choose one over another. At the end of the day, flight path is almost insignificant inside that 20 or 25 foot range. Outside of that, you'll see a little bit of difference, but the most important thing for you is to pick something that feels comfortable in your hand and that comes out cleanly so that you can play for that flight path. When you're choosing a putter, here are some of the options that you'll have. You'll have beaded versus beadless. Uh, a bead on a putter is just a very small ridge on the bottom of the disc. Beadless putters do not have that. The bead on the bottom of a putter serves to make the putter a little bit more overstable, but really it just keeps its overstability longer because you don't have so many dings uh, directly affecting the outside edge of the disc. So it just kind of protects against that. By contrast, a beadless putter is smooth all the way to the bottom of the disc. For me, I like the clean release I get off of a beadless putter, but it really is just personal preference. For example, judges and wardens are extremely similar. They're almost the same mold, except for the judge has a bead and the warden doesn't. I putted with judges for a little while before, uh, but I love that beadless feel. So once the wardens came out, I switched over to those. The flight paths are very similar. Again, personal preference. When it comes to depth of putters, it's really whichever type of putter feels best to you. Deeper putters will generally stay in the air just a little bit longer and have a little bit more glide. Uh, but if you have small hands, those might not feel good to you. Uh, if you have big hands, you might not really like uh, a shallow putter. And so it comes down to your preference and how long you want your putter to stay in the air. A couple of examples of putters that are deep versus shallow are the Dagger and the Pure. The Pure is pretty shallow as far as putters go, and it doesn't want to stay in the air quite as long on putts as something like the dagger does. The dagger really wants to stay in the air and push toward the basket. The pure is a little bit more of a point and shoot. You know you're going to have to follow through in order to make it there. Putter plastics also come down to the person. I prefer the classic hard plastic for my putters uh, because I feel like I can get a nice grip on it and I don't feel like I lose too much grip in the chains. You might get a hair more grip in the chains using a softer plastic, but for me, I just don't feel quite as comfortable with that soft plastic in my hand. So it's really just whichever one feels best to you. Now, when you're throwing approach shots, I love softer putters for that. Um, I, I throw a medium Cenus, sometimes a blend slammer. Those tend to grab the ground a little bit better. So that's where I tend to go for the softer plastic as opposed to the firmer plastic for putting. When we're talking about flight paths and choosing a putter, if you haven't already settled on a putter, I would not advise starting off with a very overstable putter like that Slammer or a Cenus because that disc is going to want to dive left at the end of its flight path. Instead, I would recommend choosing a putter with a little bit more neutral flight path like the Warden or the Judge that we talked about earlier. The Deputy is also a great example. That's an understable throwing putter, but on putts, really likes to stay straight. You also have the Marshall, which is a great putter for helping you to commit that little bit extra. Not quite as much glide as the others, but not going to fly quite as far past the basket if you miss. At the end of the day, like we'll say about putting over and over, it really comes down to what feels best to you, what you can take and replicate from practice to on the course so that you can lower your scores. We are here on Hole 17's Green at Jones West, and I'm joined by, I'd say, a pretty special guest. This is Paige Bierkus, 2018 FPO World Champion. Hello. Hello, Paige Wave. Anyway, uh, we are going to get on to talking about how to learn what style of putting is going to work best for you, and maybe which one feels more like most natural to you to start off with. Most people, when they're starting off playing disc golf, develop a spin putt because it's the one that feels most like a throw. So let's watch Paige Bierkus uh, throw a spin putt for us real quick, and then we'll talk about it. So you can see when Paige putts there, she's got some extra elbow action, she's got some extra wrist action, and a lot of times she's pretty good at disc golf, so you know, uh, <clears throat> she can throw those in, but a lot of times we see people, uh, when you're first lining up to spin putt, just kind of stand sideways and actually 
kind of throw. And you're, you're not really looking to do that. As much as possible, you want to stay squared up to the basket, even if you have that extra elbow and wrist action. That's going to give you a chance to get aggressive at the basket. Um, you saw that was a pretty straight line that Paige threw there, and that's just going to be really direct. That's one of the pros of a spin putt. However, one of the cons of a spin putt is if you commit like she just did, uh, and you miss, and you totally airball, chances are you're going to be maybe equally as far past the basket or sometimes even farther, so that hurts a little bit. Uh, but now when you're, when you're looking to develop a push putt, uh, this would be for people who really are terrified of three putting to start out of the gate. Uh, so they want to just kind of put it close, but if they don't make it, no big deal, it's a drop in. So let's see just like a pure push putt. This is, uh, this is actually Paige's natural putting style for quite a while. Nice, so you can see when Paige pulls back, her arm is pretty straight down there and she brings the putter down low. Um, and then the flight is a little bit more nose down and you can see it go up to down instead of, yeah, exactly like a rainbow. Instead of, a, instead of that straight line, it's gonna be a lot more up to down. So one of the cons is that I feel like push putts come up short quite a bit because they have that nose down and because you are throwing it a little bit higher in the air and kind of trying to land it in the basket. Uh, but if she totally air balls, say misses by like four feet to the side, which would be like a really rough miss, no big deal, you're still inside 10 feet, you're just dropping in from there. Um, now, the, the actual style of putt that you use is kind of a mix of those. That's kind of what I do as well. So let's see what you do now. This is kind of a hybrid, spush, that sort of putt. All right, so you see a little bit of, of a couple of different elements of both the push and spin putt. Uh, Paige brings the putter down to about her waistline, maybe just a little bit lower. She's got a little bit, a little bit of bend in her elbow, but everything is still straight line to the basket. And so when you are choosing a, a putting style, those are some of the things to think about. Um, what feels most comfortable to you? Is it more of a throw? Is it more of a toss? figure out which one feels more comfortable to you, and then figure out what you want your miss to be. If, it, if you are really scared of putting again, try that push putt out and see if that doesn't help you uh, a little bit. And if you are not scared of that, you wanna get aggressive every time, give that spin putt a look and we'll see what you think. When you're choosing a putting style, most of it's going to come naturally to you, whether you end up being a, a push putter or a spin putter, or kind of a hybrid putter, that's just gonna kinda come with feel. But we wanna talk about some things that are going to help you be consistent no matter which putting style you choose. Let's talk about grip. I'm more of a hybrid putter, so the way that I grip the disc is going to be kind of in between how you'd wanna grip it for a push putt as opposed to a spin putt. Uh, I like to take the first knuckle of my index finger and put it just on the underside edge of the disc, right where the bead would be on a Judge or Marshall or something like that, and then kind of put the, uh, the pad of my pinky on the inside rim of the putter. Then the other two fingers just kind of rest on the flight plate, uh, a little bit tucked into the rim, but not too much. These two fingers gripping not quite on the rim, but not quite as fanned out as possible, help me to feel like I have complete control of the flight plate and command of the angle on which I'm going to let the putter go. Now if you're more of a spin putter, you may want to bring your fingers a little bit even more toward the inside of the rim. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't advise stacking them all the way against the rim like a power grip, but just bringing them in a little bit closer is going to help you get some more revolutions on that disc so that it can stay in the air a little bit longer when you're throwing those spin putts. By contrast, it seems like push putters tend to spread their fingers out on the flight plate a little bit more so that they have even more control of the flight plate and helps them to have more points to explode off of when they throw that putt. If you're a push putter, here's a general overview of what your body is going to look like. Uh, your pullback isn't going to be quite as straight to your body as something like a spin putt or a hybrid putt will be. Instead, you're going to reach a little bit lower because your intended flight path is kind of up to down. So you're going to reach down a little bit lower and when you follow through, you're going to want to follow through high to the basket. A good general release point to think about is when you let that putter go to have your hand be level with your chin when you let a push putt go. That's going to ensure that you have the height to at least give the putter a chance to get to the basket. When you are reaching back on that push putt, you're not going to want to have a lot of extra elbow movement. In fact, you're not going to want to have a lot of extra movements, period. If you do have a little elbow bend, that's fine but you really want it to be consistent from the time that you start pulling the putter back to the time you let it go. Uh, anything outside to in is not what you're looking for with a push putt. Everything needs to be on a straight line. 
When working on your stance for a push putt, you really want to take whatever stance helps you to keep your hips pointed straight at the basket as much as possible. So a lot of people like to take their right foot if they're a right-handed putter and point their toes straight at the basket, while some people like to offset their foot just a little or angle it just a little bit. Uh, angling that foot allows you to pull the putter down a little bit more between your legs as opposed to straight at your knee or maybe just inside it. Once again, that's personal preference. Test out both and see which one helps you to keep everything on a straight line better. Spin putts, on the other hand, look entirely different from setup to execution. When a spin putter is getting ready to putt, their reach back is going to have some elbow movement, it's going to have some wrist movement, but the goal of a spin putt is to get the putter to the basket in as direct of a line as possible. When spin putters are reaching back, most of the time they're going to be pulling the putter straight toward their chest or maybe their belly button, probably their belt buckle really at the lowest. And the idea from there is to not have a lot of up and down movement, but rather a lot of straightforward movement. When you're spin putting, or just putting in general, but definitely spin putting, one of the most important things that you can do to increase consistency is to pull back and extend through the same way every single time. So get out to the practice basket, work on that elbow angle feeling exactly the same, work on that wrist snap feeling exactly the same, and just repeat that over and over and over. The more that you do that, the more consistent it's going to be on the course. And the one thing that is universally true about putting is that you have to follow through. Here, put asterisks, uh, asterisks, put some asterisks, put some asterisks on the screen right now. You have to follow through. If you don't follow through when you're putting, you're not going to make putts, plain and simple. So like we talked about with the push putt, make sure and get that hand up by your chin. When you're spin putting, make sure that you're extended fully to the basket. And you might even practice putting to the point where you feel like you're going to fall forward because you're pushing forward so much. No matter what you do, if you follow through, you are 100% increasing your chances to make that putt. My personal style of putt is more of a hybrid putt, kind of in between a push and a spin putt. Uh, when I reach the disc back, I'm going to be reaching back kind of like I'm throwing a push putt, but maybe not quite as low, not below my knees, but maybe just a little bit above my knees, somewhere in there. Uh, once the putter is down there, I'm kind of bringing myself down in order to push out. So it's not so much a back and forth as it is a down and up, but with a forward explosion. I found this style to be really helpful for me because it allows me to kind of have the best of both worlds. I don't feel like I'm super aggressively attacking the basket to where I can blow way past if I miss, uh, but I'm also gonna give the putter a chance to get there and give it a little bit of nose up so that if it gets close to the basket, it's got a chance to go in. There's nothing worse in putting, that's not true, there are some things worse. But there are not many things worse in putting than hitting one inch low and knowing that all you needed was that little bit of extra follow through. And I feel like the hybrid style helps me to get the putter to the basket a little bit better. One of the ways I think about getting the putter to the basket comes in the weight shift. Generally, when you're working on your weight shift, you wanna start with your weight on your front foot, bring it back to your back foot as you reach the putter back, and then when you get ready to release the putter, explode that weight onto your front foot so much that you feel like you're really reaching toward the basket to the point where you're almost going to fall over. Please don't actually fall over. People will call a foot fault on you. But that's the idea. You wanna have that backwards and forwards weight shift no matter what style of putt you do. Now some people will substitute this weight shift for more of a down and up uh, weight shift. So I've seen people like Cam Todd bend their knees and then when they get ready to putt, just kind of pop the putter toward the basket. Like I said, my weight shift is a little bit more of a down and out. It's really just whichever one works best for you, but you do need to work on shifting that weight forward and that's going to help you to follow through. It is important to work on that down and up weight shift because when you are forced to straddle putt, that's the sort of weight shift that you're going to have to use. So when you are straddle putting, everything's just a little bit different. Instead of having that leading foot forward, you've got your feet next to one another, maybe just outside your shoulders. And that makes it a little bit more difficult to get that backwards and forwards weight shift. So you're going to have a lot more arm involved in the putt, but otherwise you want to keep everything as similar as possible. Instead of shifting back, you're shifting down and then up and ensuring that you follow through to get that putt to the basket. One of the variables we meet when we're putting is where the basket is in relation to us. So we have a lot of downhill putts, uphill putts. 
side hill putts. We have lots of windy situations. And so adjusting to those situations is what makes you a really good putter. Uh, we talked a little bit about wind putting in Physics of Flight 2.2, so go ahead and check that out. Um, really just the brief recap is that in the wind you want to keep the putter as level as possible and not expose the underside of the disc to the wind. That's going to give you the most predictable flights that you can get. But now we're going to talk a little bit about the uphill and downhill putts. We've got a slight downhill putt right here. And when I'm putting downhill, uh, I don't like to change a whole lot, but there's one big adjustment that I make I, that I think helps out a lot. So when I'm getting ready to putt here, the putter, uh, the, the basket is, let's say, you know, maybe the bottom of the cage is at my feet. So it's not a super downhill putt, but a little bit downhill. The big change that I'm going to make, it's not a big change, I guess it's a subtle one, but it helps me a lot, is that if my comfortable stance is kind of right here, I'm going to bring my back foot back just a little bit. Maybe, maybe a step or something like that. Even more if it's more of a downhill, less if it's less of a downhill. But when I do that, that helps me to keep my same reach back distance, and that helps me to gain consistency. And so moving that back foot back, where as I would normally be right here, if I pull back and extend the same way here, there's a decent chance I throw the putter over the basket because I'm, I'm playing like it's a level putt. When I bring that leg back, it helps me to kind of set my body a little bit more downhill and follow through more down toward the basket. So this is what that'll look like normally. If we're level ground, this is what my feet are like, about right here. But when I step up to a downhill putt, I'm just gonna make that one adjustment right there. And that's gonna set me up a little bit better. We're out here at Jones West hole 18. This green generally leaves you a lot of uphill putts and side hill putts. So that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Uh, my shot has landed below the basket here, and so the entirety of the cage is above my head. So we're going to do the opposite adjustment that we did uh, on the downhill putt. And so I'm going to take my normal stance. Usually in my normal stance, my feet are about shoulder width apart. And instead of lengthening that, uh, that backswing to kind of shorten the, the follow through, maybe not shorten the follow through, but shorten the uh, amount of arm I have in front of my leg. Instead, I'm going to move that foot a little bit forward. So it's going to shorten my reach back, but elongate uh, the arm in front of my body. That's going to help me keep that same stroke, the same length of putting stroke, but now my body is more acclimated to that uphill putt. So if I take my regular stance here, feet right around shoulder width apart, I'm pretty close to the basket, but it is uphill. So I'm going to bring that foot just a little bit forward, maybe a half step forward. That's going to help me to elevate the putter just a little bit more. Now, if I step back a little bit more from here, say I'm, you know, this is probably 25 feet or so, then I'm just going to adjust accordingly with my feet. So I'm, I'm in my normal putting stance. I'm gonna bring that foot even maybe like a step and a half forward. So my feet aren't quite touching, but they're pretty close. That's going to shorten my reach back a lot, but elongate that follow through a little bit more. Now let's talk about some side hill putts. Uh, these are always kind of tricky, especially if you have a little bit of natural angle on your putter. So when I approach a side hill putt, it kind of just depends on how steep the hill is as to what stance I'm going to take. On a putt like this where I'm no farther than 20 feet, I'm going to probably just take my normal stance and then just follow through regularly. Feet are going to be in the same spot because there's not much up or downhill. It's just kind of straightforward. But if it's a really steep uphill, or maybe my feet are, uh, one's going to be quite a bit lower than the other one, then I'll go ahead and switch to a straddle stance, just so that I feel more square over the putt. Um, I'm going to have most of my weight on my bottom foot, and then just have this, uh, this foot uphill, just pretty much there for stability. When I follow through on these, I'm just trying to keep this putter as flat as possible. The danger on a side hill putt, especially if I putt with a hyzer, and it goes past the basket is that it could just fly on that hyzer all the way down because it's matching the angle of the hill. So as much as possible, I'm going to try and keep this flat. And if I do miss on the right side, it has less of a tendency to roll down the hill if I miss it. So that's actually a perfect example and one I wasn't even trying to do, but I missed on the right side. And instead of getting that really long extra flight, it just kind of stayed flat. And now I've got maybe 10 or 12 feet left. The opposite is true on the other side of the side hill. Uh, if I take the straddle stance over there, um, or if I take a straight on stance, I don't mind putting with a little bit of hyzer into, into the side hill this way. 
Um, if I do that and the putter comes in on a hyzer, I just want to make sure it's not a steep hyzer. The, probably the worst thing you can do on a side hill is land your putter on a perpendicular angle, angle to the hill, something like this. If it lands there, a lot of times that's going to roll out. But if you keep it a little bit more, um, what is this, acute? That seems like the right word. If you keep the putter a little bit more acute to the hill, it's more likely to just lay down and stop right there. So that's what I play for. Not the perpendicular, keep it as close to the uh, hill grade as possible. When you're getting ready to do some practice putting, people approach that in some totally different ways. Uh, there are some people who play games with points to kind of challenge themselves. There are some people who do some drills. There are some people who just strictly act like it's a tournament. I think there's a lot of different ways and each of them can be really effective. I kind of approach putting practice in a couple of different ways. One is if I'm trying to just drill my stroke just to make sure that it's um, really consistent and that I feel really comfortable standing over it, I'll take a stack for me of like 10 wardens or something like that and I'll set them on a chair at say 15 to 20 feet and then I'll just set up and then just kind of rapid fire. Just putt, grab a disc, putt, grab a disc, putt. And that's just to make sure that I'm doing the same motion every time. A lot of times um, if, I, if I break that up and I'm working on something in particular, you know, a footwork or a certain pullback or something like that, I'll find that in between putts, I'll slip into bad habits, into old habits. And so instead, I like to just get down and rapid fire. But when I'm really getting ready for a tournament, and uh, once I have that putting stroke drilled and I know what I want to do, uh, that's when I do my entire routine every single time. And I don't use more than two putters really ever. In fact, I usually carry a third, and I'll tell you why in a second. So uh, if I'm getting ready to practice putt, I'm going to move behind the basket over here. So I'm getting ready to practice putt for a tournament, okay? I am, uh, I'm gonna go through my entire routine. So I'll actually set down my mini. It's got my phrases that I say to myself on it. So I take a step off of it, look at, look at my mini, approach my mini, and then I say my stuff to myself. Here I am saying things to myself. And then I step up and get ready to putt. Sometimes you get lucky and they stay on the right. That's pretty sweet. Uh, but then the only reason that I'll have a third putter is so that I can get one more practice putt from this spot, but I'm never going to throw that putt and then be like, okay, and just throw another. That doesn't help at all if you're getting ready for tournament play. So for me, I will throw that first putt, and whether I make it or miss it, I'll step off and then restart my routine. Step up here, say some things to myself, say some things to myself, and then look up and putt. The reason that I'll bring three putters over sometimes is that I always putt with a putter in my offhand, just because that's how I practiced for so long. It's become comfortable. Now my left hand has a job. Um, I'll bring an extra putter so I can just pick that up off the ground so that I'm not practicing in a way that I won't actually putt in a tournament. So for me, that's the way that I like to practice. Um, I will do the rapid fire if I'm trying to drill my putting stroke, make sure that it's accurate and repeatable. And then uh, if I'm getting ready for a tournament, I'm gonna put my mini down, I'm gonna go through my entire routine. I won't get as many putts, but I will get quality putts. All right, so we just heard what Robert has to say about his putting routine and what he does to prepare for tournaments. So we talk about mine now. Um, so I'm not too strict on my putting routine, actually. What, what I like to focus on is getting the stroke and making it feel good. So whether I make the putt or not, if I feel confident um, and it feels good as it's coming out of my hand, that's kind of what I look what I try to at least accomplish when I'm practicing my putting. Um, so if I'm just putting out in my backyard or I'm dedicating my time to strictly putting, I'll usually start pretty close um, just to get my stroke down, um, like this close, just so I can get my arm loosened up um, and kind of get the, the blood flow going. But once I feel like I'm pretty warmed up, I'll throw about 10 of those putts kind of around the basket. Then I will select a certain distance so what is this like 10 feet something like that and I'll put my mini down and I'll tell myself make 20 of these um, and if, if I happen to make one and it felt awful I won't count it I want my stroke to feel good and consistent it's easy for us to like make adjustments or feel like we have to change little things in order to I guess be better and that's fine but once you find those things you want to make sure your body feels it every time so again if I miss if I make a putt but it doesn't feel right 
then I, I, I won't count that one. So I'll, I'll start here and I'll say make 20 and then I'll take two pretty big step, steps back and then I'll say make 20. And then as I get further out, I'll, I'll say less. So like from this distance, I try to just do 10, maybe 15. And then I'll usually end my, my practice session with jump putts and I'll try to make five to 10 of them. So pretty relaxed. I don't like to putt longer than 30 minutes at a time um, because my body gets really tired and pushing off your leg over and over again at least makes me tired. And so I feel like once my legs get tired, my form gets bad and I'm not practicing how I would in a tournament. Um, so again, I don't like to do it for very long at a time. Um, if I'm practicing for a tournament, so I'll do throws for warm up, but the last thing I do before I tee off is I'll putt. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just do this distance. I'll just try to stay close to the basket to get my stroke down and to get it feeling good because if I'm feeling good this close, I'm gonna feel good this close and then I'm gonna feel good this close. So that's what I do when I'm practicing. Um, again, it's different for everybody, but um, just remember, make sure your stroke feels good and uh, yeah, should be good. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Physics of Flight. Once again, you can reference back to Physics of Flight 2.2, where we talk about putting in the wind if you need more information there. Hopefully with some of the tips we've given you today, you become a better putter and lower those scores. If you haven't already, you need to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications, because the next episode, we're going to be talking about scrambling. So learn how to get out of trouble with us then.